Welcome to Name and Occupation in Depth. Today's hot topic is Boston. So we have some live on location footage and uh, a lot of fun facts. It was founded in the 1630s. Yeah. by English Puritans who fled to the new land to pursue religious freedom. Yes. Uh, Boston is considered by many to be the birthplace of the American Revolution, you guys. And the Puritans okay. started the and Harvard as well, the oldest university in North America. Let's go. <laughs> and we have a fun fact about that statue of uh, Mr. Harvard. Oh, don't we have Let's some footage? We do yeah, have we some do. Just play it. it. Just play it. It's two seconds long. Anyway, it's good. All right. Francesco Maragoni, live on location. Cambridge, Harvard. So where are we now and what's going on? Okay, so we have the statue of John Harvard right behind us. And apparently there's something about touching the shoe, his left shoe. I'm not sure what it is. However, maybe it gives you good luck. Maybe it makes you smarter. Let us know if you feel any smarter what's going on. <laughs> she goes, Dad, that's enough. So, so we that did great, ask great somebody, and I don't have the video right now, but yeah. So apparently it's, um, students come in awesome, touch. Awesome. Do you think she got smarter? I think she got smarter. Boston population as of 2021, so it's 650,000 it says. There was so much live energy, kind of like the type of energy that you'd get from New York. It was nice. It was nice to feel. That was pretty epic. I have an aunt and two cousins living there. Oh, yeah? No way! Yeah. Benjamin Franklin. Now, we're not going to tell you that he's the greatest American ever. Everyone knows that's Dolly Parton. But he may just have been uh, the most <laughs> American American ever. That's good. That's good. Here's what like we mean. It. Chances are that almost every trait you think of as part of our national character is something you can find in the life of Benjamin Franklin. America is a country where you can rise from nothing to achieve great things, right? Well, that describes Ben pretty well. One of 17 children, his formal education only went up to the age of 10. Although people ended up calling him Dr. Franklin because he nevertheless got an honorary doctorate from Oxford in addition right. to honorary degrees from Yale and Harvard. And he got his start when he ran away from Boston violating an employment contract with his own brother to start a new life in Philadelphia. He turned into a big success. Between his newspaper, the Pennsylvania Gazette, and his best-selling book series, Poor Richard's Almanac, Franklin did so well as a publisher that he was able to retire by the age of 42. The first lending library in America, he starts it. The country's first volunteer firefighting company, he starts it. The University of Pennsylvania, he starts it and serves as its first president. He helps charter the nation's first hospital, and he even runs the colony's postal service. You're gonna wanna sit down for this one at a profit. Boston Red Sox home. Oh, so cool. One in the original place where they played great baseball in America. So 1903, oh. they won the first World Series ever. The first one that was ever uh, they had. Fun yep. fact. Fun fact. Let's go. Well, it ties in with uh, the Patriots, actually, because their first game was in the Fenway. Oh, I just watching footage of him playing. It's just beautiful. 
Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> cool that they uh, they won the Super Bowl that one year and uh, the Red Sox. It was 2018. Boston Bruins will take the ice 12 years after Fenway Park hosted its very first Winter Classic. That one, Bruins fans certainly like the outcome. The Bees beat the Flyers in overtime. This time around, it's the other team from the Keystone State, Sidney Crosby and the Pittsburgh Penguins. Thank you very much here at Fenway Park where the NHL hit an absolute home run back in 2010. Cool. They'll try and do the same this time around in 2023. And that's where we park. Okay, that's where we park right there. Yeah. That is where we park. Thank you for watching Name and Occupation in Depth. We come to you every single week. Now don't forget to subscribe, share, and like the content. Fenway Frank, go socks. And you know what the main ingredient in the Fenway Park is? Fenway, Fenway Frank is? <laughs> it's the mustard. Mustard. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Andre loves mustard. It's I the mustard. It. It's Andre's right. favorite condiment. They call it Bean Town, right? Really? I need to know why they call it Bean Town. That's always been in the back of my mind. So the nickname refers to the famous regional dish of Boston baked beans. You don't carry Bean Town and. Not have good beans. <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? That's true. They must be, they must good, be right? good. Oh, this is a, an Irish breakfast in Boston. So, like, one of the, the sausage. Hold on. Bacon. Where's the big old glass of beer if that's an Irish breakfast? Right? Uh, Can you please? So, there was a restaurant that we did go. Uh, we usually try to stay away from franchises and stuff, but this is a fairly new franchise. So, yeah. in the morning, which I was very surprised. I didn't know they served breakfast and it was really good. Mexican breakfast. Yes. Oh, that's uh, nice. Uh, instead of a beer, it's a tequila. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah. yeah, there was like pulled pork, there was beans, it was kind there of was fish. It was, yeah. yeah. This one's making my like yeah, that's... jaws tingle. It's the perfect oh. time of year for a warm, cozy bowl of soup. And today I'm whipping up an all-time favorite, a That's good classic me. New England clam very, very chowder. Me. We'll start with about a cup of diced white onion. We'll also need about a cup of celery and a cup mm. of carrots. You can peel or not peel your potatoes, up to you. I'm gonna peel them. Over the vegetables, the recipe calls for three cans of minced clams. Now this is not in the recipe and this is completely optional. I'm going to start bacon? by rendering some bacon fat. A lot of chowder recipes do have some sort of salt pork in there. <laughs> and one quart of half and half. We'll whisk that together until it's nice and smooth. Now is the finishing touches. We're gonna stir oh, in our clams, clam. season it with a little salt and pepper. And then what I love is adding the red wine vinegar at the end. That's just gonna kind of cut that richness and just bring it all together. It was a uh, Manhattan, Manhattan yeah. clam chowder. So there's no cream, no butter. It's more tomatoes and broth. And also mine has more of the fresh uh, the clams and, and the frozen clams, all the canned clams. But the, froze, the fresh clams is a, gives it a little bit more better taste. Right there. Right there. Uh, right there. So <laughs> if you ever do the, uh, nice. If you ever do the uh, Boston Red Brick history uh, walk, uh, you go through some of the two best cannolis and also some of the best pizzas. Uh, one of the pizza place in Boston has been over also 100 years old um, while serving. And there's two cannoli places. And, of course, you go to one, you go to the other. They always say, whoever, I've been here first and I have the best cannolis and the other one doesn't. Like, are there different versions? Is it like a, So a the real traditions with uh, ricotta and stuff like that or mascarpone. I know there's different different tricks, but I've seen my grandmother do it with a wood stick. Um, okay. always the same wood yeah, stick. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you'd have the color of the wood stick that's always like being deep fried. 
it's all about the whipping. It's all about the crust. Nice, fresh of the uh, of the pastry that's fried. Um, that's what you want. So Mike's pastry, that's one of them. And there's another one too somewhere else that, that has a really good place. That was my favorite donut for a long time. Like the Boston cream mm. was my favorite donut for a long time. I thought it was, it was, you know, you could rely on the Boston cream. The Americanized uh, version of cannolis. Oh. oh, oh right? There's the link, buddy. You dip. just nailed it. Boston cream pie. What is going on? How is the Boston? How is the Boston? Well, you make the room oh, for I it. See. You put it inside. Oh, I see. Oh, that's smart. So it's a big version and... of the Boston cream. Yeah. Don't oh, yes, yeah. right. With a thicker crust. Except it's a... a cake. Except it's a cake rather than. Yeah. It's a nice chocolate. Oh, that's interesting. Wonder what's special. Probably about the easier to make. And, uh, yeah, donuts, yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. It looks like it's cake. You put a hole in it, and off you go. Boom! Done. Right? Like... You, you stick a bottle of Nutella in the middle. <laughs> 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 Oh, nice, Dave. So, I like that. Look at that. That's, that's nice, cool. Dave. Good job. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, cool. yeah. That's wicked. There, you should have the Cheers bar. Oh, Ooh. cool. Okay. And the Cheers bars, everybody knows it's famous. Question, though. Like, sure. the, the so show that was... So, on the left... Like the show the wasn't in the real bar. Like, they had another bar that was identical to it. Is that it? So, they use only the outside of the, the bar to shoot for the, the TV show. So that okay. TV show ranged for 11 season, 275 episode, and it and it ran between 1982 and 1993. So that is wow. going in. So DEU is all the way up there. The, the good thing about that, it's funny because I went in, it was a little bit late. Uh, so I'm like, is there any place? Like, there's no way. He's like, there's room in the on the bar. It could be the room at the back. So I ended up just going at the back. But it's kind of like a very new um, English style pub, um, and it's authentic. It's been there forever. So yeah, I went at the back and I sat at the bar and I had a big pint. And there's a picture of the uh, the pint that I had. Of course, it has a nice Cheers logo. And um, I did stop on the way out. I did stop uh, and got myself a little merchandise here. So it's, uh, oh, you know, cool. it's a bar mat. little Cheers bar mat. Nice. So cool. So now I have the whole idea and it says uh, where everybody knows your name, right? So Cheers Boston. Awesome. Very nice. So, you know, that was one of the stops that I did. Uh, yeah, it looks, yeah. I it looks bigger. It looks bigger than I thought. Yeah, it's yeah pretty, true, uh, eh? So that is the uh, famous scene from Goodwill Haunting with Robin William. Uh, oh, so, you know, you cool. Go there, I, got a, I got a clip boom. of that. So got, there's Robin William there. And uh, that was uh, a bench that they use in Goodwill Haunting. Uh, there, there you are. But why the is there like two <laughs> so many spots and this is on one hamilton street it's the orpheum theater so the orpheum theater in boston was built on the old site of the boston music hall they've had people like tenacious d queen paul simon bob dylan new two tragically hip uh gregory garcia jason mars rush neil diamond uh, sorry neil young Guns and Roses, and on and on and on. Uh, but that's one of the first ones that was built in 1852. Gorgeous. Nice. Check me Nice. Well, Tom Schultz used to work for Kodak. He was the guitarist, and while working for Kodak, he was an engineer, and he would make all these recording things and stuff like that and and that's why their sound is so pristine are they from outer space 
<laughs> well, look up, look at that cover upside down. It's a guitar. There, that that thing. If there's a way to rotate it, it's a guitar, and it looks like spaceships going through space, but the guitar is going through. Uh, they're all upside down guitars. No way. Oh, Dude. I see yeah. it. The Aerosmith is an American rock band formed in Boston. Nice. Oh, right? good. good catch. Yeah. Good catch. Um, I went to see them in concert, actually. They were freaking amazing, I'm just going to say. I like yeah, it. Yeah, it's really, really good. Well, yeah. Dropkick Murphys. Dropkick Murphy, yeah. So we are in front of MGM Music Hall, which happens to be right beside Fenway Park. Check that out. Well, well, looking. Hey, this is a secret message. Dropkick Murphy. What am I looking? There's a secret what? message on the board. Who's playing? Who's playing? Oh, I got a small Build screen it. here, Daisy. Yeah, Daisy. <laughs> Tell can see. <laughs> so, they want to know what Hamilton's about, babe. Tell us. It's about um, Alexander Hamilton, who is a who is one of the founding fathers of America. It was really kind of a musical about his life story, and um, it's just about him and his struggles and his love life and what ended up killing him and kind of I like to say has a little talked a little bit about the roles of um like how America was built uh, how it affects today but yeah I don't know I really enjoy it okay. I, um let me just share this finally the reason why we're here you guys we're here to see Hamilton that's pretty majestic I'm sure they love it. It's just fantastic. I felt like I was like a queen, like a royalty. Like you feel that elegance, that elegance that you you want to feel when you're going to the show, you know? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Yeah, tell me, tell us a little bit of the history. It happened in 1928. <clears throat> really? That's so surprising. Cool. How many people does it hold? 2,600 people. Yeah, 2600. I saw it. Uh, Picture of what it looks like inside that I took. So if you look up, this is what you see. I'm in the presence of grandeur. There's a lot of music that talks about you're running out of time. You're running out of time. What are you going to do with the time you have left? And the first time that I watched huh. it, it really had an impact on me because he's think he's they're writing they're writing the play and the words in the play because he he dies in a duel that's how hamilton dies right he dies okay. so so they're very apropos to his life story so you're running out of time you're running he's he's writing these papers He's writing these papers and you're running out of time and you're and there's this whole concept of like you're running out of time. And then at the end, it's like who's gonna history's got its eyes on you. History's <laughs> got its eyes on you. Yes, history's got his eyes on you, Hamilton, but history's got his eyes on you, Chris. History's got his eyes on you, Andre. History has his eyes on Francesco and everybody and me. And that spoke yeah, to me. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. am I going to do with the time that I have left? Because I am running out of time. Everyone's running out of time. And who's going to tell our story? You too. That's, that's, <laughs> time capsule right here, baby. 